Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today, um, we're going to be in the book of Acts in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And um, I'm kind of excited because I found the lexicons that I was looking for. The one for the Old Testament and one for the New Testament. So they'll translate the words. And uh, I have a Strong's Concordance that I can look up a word. And then it will tell me what the number is. And I, when I can go to my lexicon when they get here, beside it, then I can look and see what that word means. So that I can more clearly understand what the scripture is telling me. So then you'll have a better un understanding and idea because I have a better idea. And so I had the blue ones and um, I had this little young guy that he was all there, and um, he would um, spend his money um, going to sing karaoke. He thought that was m the most fun thing. And um, anyway, so he would come home late from the karaoke place, and he'd be hungry, and he hadn't bought enough food, so he'd be hungry, and course me and my my heart well you know um what am i gonna do tell him oh well good night um you know hope you uh have some breakfast in the morning goodbye <laughs> uh no <laughs> that just won't fly so i'd bring him in and i'd make him something to eat sometimes i'd have leftovers and i'd make up a plate of something and give him a piece of bread and butter and make him a glass of milk. And I'd feed him up real good. And then I'd take some food and I'd put it in a bag. And so I'd never send him home empty-handed. He'd have something for the next day. Anyway, that little booger had bed bugs. And he brought them in my house, knowing he had them. But I can't be angry with him. Because he just didn't have the mental capacity to recognize that he would bring them from his house to my house. So, anyway, uh, I went through so much stuff and washed so many loads and loads of clothes and um, pulled furniture away from the wall so that the bug guy could come and spray and... Oh, washed every blanket I owned and started putting them in garbage bags so that nothing else could get to them. And then what happens to your books is that when you have the bed bugs, they can get in this little here, in this little area here, and they can get in every page of them. Of the book now I went through an awful lot of my books but at some point at some point I just decided I couldn't go through any more pages and I really hated getting rid of my books they had been serving me very well and I loved having them for the reference and um so now i've found the blue one which is the old testament but i couldn't find the blue one in the new testament the greek one i found the hebrew and um it's on its way it's coming ah, be here shortly and then also um i found another the it's very similar but it's written by a different person there. And so that one will be coming 
very shortly as well. I ordered them both from a man on eBay. I say a man. It could be a woman. But it, I ordered both of them from an um, eBayer. And uh, they'll be coming shortly. And I've used this eBay guy before. So I'm, I'm confident that I'm going to actually get what I ordered. Once upon a time, I ordered some books. And I didn't get the books that I ordered. And I... But they were very nice, and I sent them an email, and I said, the books that I received do not look like the books that were posted on the listing. And they said, oh, no problem. And they refunded my money and told me I didn't have to return the books, which I thought was pretty good customer service, right? Because otherwise, I'd have to go package them up and then take them to the library but you can ship books under a library rate library rate and it's much cheaper it's probably the cheapest way to send anything but um don't get caught <laughs> using it if you're not sending books that's illegal so um anyway um uh I, I didn't have to send them back, which was a blessing. But, um, anyhow, so I had the, the whole bunch of books. Oh, my goodness. I had another book that was similar to this book, similar to the Haley's Bible handbook. But I got rid of that one. The pages were really fine, like thin pages, like in my King James here. And so every little page, and of course you've got to go all the way up to this part of your Bible to make sure there's not a bug hiding in there. And then you have to kill each one you find. And um, my Bible, I went through every page. I was like, uh-uh, we're not, um, uh-uh, this is not getting thrown away. There's no way. I will look through it 10 times if I have to. But anyway, um, so, and it was sad because, because he, he didn't know how to, um, take care of things in his apartment, um, to get rid of the bugs. There were things he was supposed to be doing, like changing his sheets and washing, uh, washing his sheets and, vacuuming every day and if you have a canister vac you could dump that out but if you had a, a vacuum cleaner with a bag in it then you would have to vacuum and tie that bag up and throw it out every day and the bug a spray guy would come and so everything had to be pulled away from the wall and everything had to be gone through you know, all the clothes in your closet, all the clothes in your dresser, in the drawers in your dresser, and um, all your books, everything had to be gone through. And I did just what I could do, and finally I was just at the point where I'm like absolutely exhausted. And so I had to decide, was I going to continue to push myself or was I going to just let go of some of my books? And you don't know how many times <laughs> I went, why did I throw my books away? Ah. But there was some kind of way you could um, treat them with some kind of chemical. And I'm like, you know, you have your book and then you're touching your face and you're rubbing your eye and picking your nose. <laughs> anyway, and I'm like, um, I'm not too keen on putting chemicals on my books. So I let them go. Somebody said you could put them in a freezer, you know, and I had room in my freezer and I could have put them in there. But it was something like it had to be in there um, for like 18 days or something. I mean, it was a really long time. I can't remember now what it was. But anyway, my little guy, he...
they kicked him out because he didn't know what to do to get rid of the the bugs and so they they kicked him out and bless his heart they had gotten so bad that um he couldn't take anything from his apartment except a little bag of clothes is all he left with no he left his tv he left all his clothes he left all his furniture he had to get rid of his cat it was a mess and i felt so bad for him because his brother had died and he had a some clothes and things that was his brother's and um i asked him if he had got those and he said no he said no and you could just see it was tearing him up but you know wasn't anything i could do about it i was dealing with my own problem <laughs> oh but anyway i want to get another sofa cushion off a sofa when i find somebody's put one out but you have to open up the zippers and look inside and check all the seams and everything so you make sure you don't bring any in your house and um so enough of that <laughs> i am tired and i went to bed and i tried to go to sleep but i just kept being too in too much pain and so I finally gave it up and got up out of the bed and I took some medicine and uh, I ate some um, chips that have a lot of, uh, of um, pepper, cassation, um, and it's good for inflammation. So I ate some of them. I'm not that crazy about those chips, but... They have a lot of that that um, that pepper in them that helps with the inflammation. And as a matter of fact, it's kind of making me a little warm. But it's a good thing. So we'll go with that. And anyway, I, um, I don't know why I'm jabbering away like that. But, oh, I was going to tell you guys, too, my... The right foot rest that was broke. Well, now the whole leg is broke. <laughs> I put some duct tape on it. And I got confused on the days of the week. I've been sleeping so much. I tell you guys, I've been sleeping so much. Um, that um, the, the foot rest, it was the leg rest wouldn't stay up because it's electric leg rest and then um the then it got where it wouldn't stay where i put it and it would slowly work its way down and drag and hit on the cement when i would try to go up a ramp well it did that and the next thing i know i'm trying to come in the house and the whole thing the whole leg rest and foot rest just went and uh, so it's hanging straight down off of my wheelchair. And I have to hold it up with my leg, my foot, so that I can drive. So I took out my Gorilla, gorilla tape <laughs> and uh, tried taping it. So far, it's, it's um, holding it from, from being in the worst place that it could be. And I will... Um, I've been thinking about what I have, something that is going to be something I can bend, but is going to, uh, to um, like maintain its shape once I bend it, so that I can duct tape that to the leg rest and to the part where it broke off. So hopefully <laughs> I can keep it from dragging or from what I'm afraid it's going to do is when I'm clicking along is that it's going to come down and catch and flip me. <laughs> Please pray for me that that doesn't happen. Um, and anyway, so I'm going to just have to take it nice and slow. But I thought I had a doctor's appointment tomorrow, but I realized when I went to bed and I set the clock for Monday morning at 8 o'clock, 
that um, it was two days away and I went two days away so then I pulled down my little thing at the top and there it said today's Saturday I was like oh well I guess that's a good thing in a way because then I can double check and make sure that whatever it is I do to this foot rest that it'll be pretty reliable and stay where I can where I where I get it you know and not keep falling down on me while I'm trying to go down the sidewalk and get on the bus and get off the bus and cross the highway and get to my doctor's office because uh, that's how I have to go it's on the bus so anyway I ordered Annie some canned food today um, everything you know guys is getting to where it's getting hard to get and I thought I really should get her some canned food I have plenty of dry food but um, I had last month I had canned up 21 jars of dog food for her um, vegetables and liver and um, so that was great and that saved me a ton of money and it was very convenient and uh, I've got I think two jars left but I'm like with my back the way it is right now I'm like there is no way I'm gonna be able to get in there and and pull a roast pan in and out cook that meat for her and you know cut up a um, butternut squash and roast it and <laughs> I'm like Mm, we got to do something else so hopefully um, it'll be okay and it'll work out and uh, she'll be able to tolerate it because when she was a puppy she ate something that was out there under the bush and it was black and it looked like a stick of margarine but it was solid black and she had chomped a bunch of it before I realized she had gotten it out from underneath the bush. Well, it almost killed her. She was um, bleeding from her rectum and it was getting worse. And so I called my daughter and I said, I need you to take me to the vet with Annie. Oh, mom, what do you need to go to the vet for? You know, of course, my daughter had gotten to the age at the point, you know, <laughs> she thinks mom, you know, is, you know, losing it. I wasn't losing it at that point in time. Although I am starting to slip a little now, but um, anyway. Um, so we get to the vet and um, and the, um, I told the vet, I said, you know, I said, I feel really bad because my last doggie, she got sick and I got sick and she died. And he says, oh, no, no, no. And he started petting my hand. He said, this one's not going to die. We're going to fix her up. And um, I, I said, well, did you check the, because I brought a little sample of her stool. I said, did you check for the blood in her stool? And my daughter goes, blood in her stool, Mom? And I said, yeah, she's got blood in her stool, honey. And it's getting worse every day. She goes, oh, Mom, I didn't know that didn't ask either <laughs> but anyway I'm sure a lot of you older older my older friends out here can relate to that you know being treated that way because you're older um, and it's not because you're um, you're incapable of making decisions or doing things um, it's that you've maybe said something and repeat it yourself <laughs> several times or um or said you know I know I have that thing but I can't find it anyway that's what happened with my daughter but anyway after after that if I called her and said I needed to go to the vet she didn't question me so that's just the way life goes but it's very interesting 
Oh, and I was supposed to have, oh, guys, I don't know. We need to pray for the elderly. I was supposed to have um, someone come in and help me with my housework. They were supposed to come today um, on Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and they didn't come. So at 3.30, I called um, Daniel and asked him, um, was the person coming or were, were they just not going to make it today? And so he said, well, let me make a call and I'll call you back. So he called me back and um, he said she wasn't going to be able to make it today. But he said we would uh, try for Tuesday. And I asked him, I said, well, what are they paying um, the girls to, um, to do this now? And they used to pay them $9 an hour, which still wasn't there. It wasn't enough money. But now they're paying them $13 an hour. And, you know, it just kind of irritates me because the federal government, the Democrats are pushing for all the businesses to pay minimum wage of $15 an hour. And, and yet and still here they are running this federal program for the elderly so they can stay in their home rather than having to go to a assisted living or a, a nursing home. And, uh, and they won't pay the 15 themselves. And then my daughter, I was telling her, and I said, I don't know if um, my youngest granddaughter would be interested in that or not. I know she's not working. And um, she told me, she says, Mom, she said, even at Taco Bell, they're hiring people, paying them 19 to $20 an hour. To work at Taco Bell, I'm like, oh my gosh, how are companies even going to stay working? And they still can't get enough people to, you know, to stay open their regular hours. They're closing early. I'm like, I don't know. This world's getting really wacky really quick. And evil is springing up, guys. And I want you guys to be aware that we need to stay real close to Heavenly Father. And we need to stay right with him. And we need to be on our guard every minute. Because there are a lot of evil things that are coming on our earth. That are coming on the world and coming on us. And we're going to start seeing it more and more. We are in the birth pains. So you know when a woman goes into giving um, birth that those pains, they start off and they're small and they come far apart. But as the birthing time goes on, those birthing pains become more intense and they come closer together. And that's what's happening. And we're not going to see it slow down. There's not going to be a break. And, and at, and then at um, very close to the end, there will be, um, it, it'll just be to the point that it's just bad, 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 bad until the babe is born. So, until our Lord and Savior. Can you believe it? Our King is coming soon. Aren't you excited? But we do have to be very careful. We do not want to be tricked into worshiping Satan. Are into taking that mark or allow, allow ourselves to get in a position where we would be willing to take that mark to get a bowl of porridge, you know, like um, Esau did with Jacob and sold his birthright to get that bowl of porridge and some bread. Anyway, um, we don't want to get in that kind of position. So I hope you are putting back some food. And um, I know that the prices are getting more expensive and that things are getting harder to find. But if I could make some suggestions on what you should get, people say, get what you eat. Well, meat is getting harder to find by the minute and the price is ramping up 
rather quickly because we're dealing with the bird flu and then there's some kind of cattle bacterial infection that cattle are getting in New Zealand they um they they would go to a farm and if one cow had that infection they would put them all down so they could just wipe a farmer completely out of all his cattle and um all total they had called 175,000 cows that they killed because of the virus. Now, you and I know, based on the results of the COVID-19 test and their accuracy, that we're dealing with the same um, potential problems with them testing the animals we could be getting false positives. Will they test twice before they do something? Or are they just going to roll in there and go, oh yeah, you got an infection. You know, um, the, 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 the farmers that, the ranchers that have cattle and they don't have like, you know, hundreds of, or a thousand head that, you know, they they were milking these cows and they know them by name and they know their personality so these cows are not just livestock they're they're attached to them you know and they have um the a connection you know to these cattle and i just feel so bad for them and at the same time, I feel bad for everybody who's going to be wanting meat and not being able to get it or find it or afford it. So please, put back canned meat, all that you can find and afford. Then you're going to want to look at different types of food and the length of time that those foods will store. So you'll want to have some canned vegetables and that juice, the liquid that's on green beans or on corn or carrots, do not, do not throw that away. You can make mashed potatoes and use that as a liquid to make the mashed potatoes. So, or you can drink it, you know, and, and keep back your, your bottled water for just drinking. And, um... So you're going to have to learn to be smart with what you have, your resources. Now, you have to think about things like, okay, everybody's like, get beans and rice. Yes, they will keep you alive. But how long does it take to cook them? How much water do you need to cook a pound of beans? Um, I would advise you to cook two pounds of beans when you cook beans. It'll use the same amount of energy. And that's the other thing that's going to be happening is the price of the energy. So running your stove or um, your oven to cook your food, you're going to have to start thinking about how long am I going to have to run that? Okay, well, if you're going to put the oven on or you're going to have a the stove on and you so you've got that burner going um, would it be a good time to turn the oven on if it's a cold night and maybe bake a bread or bake um, some rolls or bake some crackers or bake a cake or cornbread to go with what you're making on the stove top yes because that's doing two things that's warming your house and it's cooking your food so it that will help with your heating bill uh, um, on Alaska prepper today he was talking about that heating oil has gone up to four dollars and something um, in whatever me way it's um, I don't know if it's measured in um, gallons or liters or 
or how it's measured. Um, but it's gone up to four dollars and something. And he did a little mathematics on the calculator and showed that it had gone up two and a half times what he had paid for it last summer where he um, bought some in, to put away because he figured that it was going to rise up. And, you know, he's, I don't think he's a very wealthy guy, but I think he's, he's situated financially well enough that he could buy the containers and buy enough oil to put back to, to be able to run his, oil um, furnace with the heating oil for the whole winter and um, he said he tried to put back enough for two years so then so let's get back to the food now um, if you have a dehydrator then you can dehydrate things like um, vegetables frozen vegetables are already blanched so you just put them on your trays and you can dehydrate them until they sound like little rocks, little pebbles, and there's no moisture left in them. And then you're going to want to put them in a container that um, you can um, suck the air out and you don't want any moisture to get to that food then once you dehydrate it. And so you can buy dry food you can dry uh, buy um, canned foods um, things like soup and ravioli um, things that you like to eat like that um, uh, canned vegetables are good and uh, you know to put as a side you can use the water to help make the ma um, use it to make macaroni and cheese to help boil the noodles you're gonna have to start thinking about how long is those gallons of water that you put back? How long are they going to last? What's the best way that I can use them? How can I get the most out of every drop of water I have? Because water is going to be really important. And do you have a way to filter water? I was fortunate enough. I had been watching these Alexa Pure um, water filtration systems and I had been watching for a long while and it just kept being above what I could do you know and then one day I saw that they had put it on sale the price was dropped down about seventy dollars and I looked in my my bank and I had just enough to buy the thing and I had two cents left in the bank and <laughs> and what happened was I didn't calculate I it hadn't calculated the tax and there was no shipping fee so it overdrew me at the bank for the tax but my um, um, credit union was very nice and they paid that so there she sits so I can um, strain water but there's uh, other ways to purify water and you can, um, you know, you can buy bleach, but regular bleach, you don't want to get this, the one, the splashless bleach. Don't try to use that one when you're trying to purify water. Um, and the best thing, if you're going to use bleach to purify water, say you're going to get water from a lake or something, then you you can get what they call pool shock and it's chlorine and um, as long as you keep it dry it'll last for years for you to be able to continue purifying water for years we do not know the length of time that the famine will last but from what I've read and what I've seen in the different books in the Bible, it looks like once the famine starts, it's not going to let up. It's going to just continue to get worse and worse. So please try to put some food back for your family and then learn how to make the 
the easiest loaf of bread and the one that uses the least amount of energy to bake to make the bread so that you can have bread because it's a great way to stretch your food and fill your belly instant mashed potatoes and rice very good you can buy just the regular long grain white rice don't try to buy and stock up brown rice because of the oils in the brown rice it will not last nearly as long as the plain white long grain so that you'll want to get that now another little trick with the long grain rice is you can cook it go ahead and cook it and then you can put it on a dehydrator or even dehydrate it in your oven as long as you're keeping a close eye on it and you've got your oven down on the lowest temperature it'll go and you can dehydrate that rice and then it'll be like uh, um, Mr. Ben's dehydrated rice the minute rice and that way it won't take you as much water or energy to cook it and um, but, so you can do that with rice um, you can do that with potatoes um, you have to cook them and then you have to um, mash them then you know um, level them out and put them on the dehydrator and they can be dehydrated and you can put that away um, or you can just buy instant mashed potatoes and put those back um, beans are really good but lentils are actually better than just any kind of bean you have they have a lot more protein than just plain um, pinto beans for instance or black beans um, lentils have way more vitamins and and um, and protein that will help sustain your body and and keep you healthy it's not just a matter of having something to eat you have to think about what vitamins and what minerals you're getting from your food to keep you healthy so that you're not starting to get anemic and you're not not going to get the rickets because you can't get your vitamin c and um, that's important so these kinds of things you want to look at so um, and you'll want to get peanut butter unless of course you have people in your family who are allergic to peanut butter um, but peanut butter and jelly um, I've been making jelly you can make jelly with um, liquid um, liquid juice you can use it um, and make um, jelly like right here I have this bottle of orange juice and it's good until May 22nd and I bought some oranges and I have some lemons and I have some grapefruit and I'm waiting for my um, lemon peeler to come um, zester to come tomorrow it should come tomorrow but what I, I'm going to try to do because making jam or jelly or marmalade is not as labor intensive as if I were going to be making meals and dog food and things like that because it would require me to stand a lot longer and that's the problem that's what I'm not able to do right now so um, I want to get the zest from the lemons from the grapefruit and from the oranges and I want to put that in water or just plain orange juice and boil it because it takes a while for those peelings to cook clear so like if you were cooking an onion you'd cook it until it turned clear well the the, the uh, citrus peeling really has to get clear <laughs> And so I'm not going to be cooking it for days and days and days. So I'll cook it that way. And then once that's done, then I can put in my juice and put in the fruit, you know, 
um, from the oranges and stuff and lemons and and uh, grapefruit so it should come out really good now when you're making marmalade you want to be careful not to get too much of that white pef the p-i-t-h um, it has a lot of nutrients in it but it's very bitter and you'll have to use a ton of sugar <laughs> to counteract that act that bitter but I want to make it for the vitamin sake of the vitamin C so that um, I can take care of that part of um, our nutrients. And um, I'm trying to think, um, you know, you can buy cereal, um, but do check your dates on the boxes and see how long it's going to last. And that's another thing that you'll want to do is when you buy your your um, canned goods, you buy your cereal, and you see it, it has a date on it, um, you want to make that date highly visible. So I'm looking at this, these dark sweet cherries um, that I'm going to use to make. Well, if I physically can, I'm planning on turning these into candied uh, cherries to use in my icebox fruitcake. Now, this is good until the tw until mm, July 2024. So, it would be a good idea to write on your can, and I have a marker that's got a thicker writing on point on it but I'm gonna write um, July which is 7 7 24 now you can see that it's on here but it's not that dark that's why I want to find my my um, my marker that has a much thicker point on it so that I can see it easily when I'm dealing with things that are in the cupboard. And that's the other thing, is you want to rotate your stuff. Don't just go buy a bunch of fruit and put it on the shelf and not pay any attention to the date. And then later, you've eaten a couple of cans and you want to refurbish, and it's on sale, so you go and you buy more than what you used to refurbish your pantry. And so you get more fruit and you stick it there in the front. Well, the older stuff is what you want to be using, and it'll be at the back of the shelf. So you want to rotate it. When somebody's talking about rotating, it's not talking about turning your can. Um, it's talking about using what's at the back up first. So that that's why you want to mark the dates. So when you're there and you're looking, um, you, you don't have to strain your eyes and spend all that time going, you know, because how they write it so small, like it's a secret. <laughs> um, that, so you can keep up with that you're using the oldest stuff first, so that you're not going to wind up with, um, you know, half a shelf of, of uh, canned fruit that's good for two years and the rest of it's on its, you know, month and, and year of being, you know, the best by date. Now you can eat food past your best by date. Don't start throwing your food out because it's past the best by date. I get, I get a senior box of food from the senior services and, um, I called them one time because every can that I got was um, already this this year. It was dated this year and even a month or two after this year date. So some stuff I got in May expired in April that that year that I got it and I so I called them and because I was concerned about them sending so much of the food that they sent out of date that way. And she said, 
don't worry, hon. She says a lot of people think that you shouldn't eat the food um, after the best buy date. But truly, you can eat it up for five years as long as there's nothing wrong with the can. It's not bowed out. This isn't bowed out when you push it on it. There's nothing that seeped out around the, the seams on the can that's um, black. Uh, when you open it, it's not molded. It, it has a good seal when you open it then you should be okay. But if you pick up a can and it's got juice seeping out a lot around this here seal at the can or at the bottom, you don't want to use that. You want to wrap it in newspaper, put it in your trash can, and take it out to your dumpster as soon as possible. Now, of course, we may run into the situation where we don't have anyone picking up our garbage. You're going to want to get the people in your neighborhood or in your apartment complex together. And you're going to have to talk to them about the situation with garbage. You're going to want to get anything that you can burn. That paper, cardboard, whatever it is. And you're going to want to separate that out. So you can burn that. And then the cans and the plastic, you're going to want to try to separate that so that you can recycle if it's possible. But you don't want to burn that plastic or that metal unnecessarily. It's nothing you can do with it as you and I as an individual little person. But if it comes down to, and we're at war, we're going to want to take those cans and those plastic things to a recycling center so that they can be recycled and utilized for things for our troops to keep it going and um, also to help <laughs> keep our supplies going. So that's just some of the little things to think about. Um, flour, sugar, yeast... Um, you can get baking powder and salt, but definitely get salt. Now, if you buy iodized salt, that's good, but it doesn't last as long without getting caked up as uniodized salt, salt that hasn't been iodized. And um, you will want to have salt that's not iodized if you're canning. So if you're putting up potatoes and green beans or ground meat or something like that in your canner, you're going to want to use um, plain salt, pickling, or it says pickling or um, canning salt. And um, that doesn't have the iodine because it, it will discolor um, your food and just makes it not look very appetizing. And that's another thing we should think about, is we want to have things that break the monotony of, of what we're eating, especially for little kids. Little kids can get what's called food fatigue, eating the same thing every day, same thing every day. And they'll get to the point where they just won't want to eat. And you can't entice them. And they just will starve to death. So you want to be able to do something with the sweets. You know, you want to be able to make some homemade pancakes. So get you a recipe book or get a notebook like I've done. And then when you find a good recipe, um, write it down in that book. Pancakes or waffles than what the recipe is to make those um, pancakes. And then, you know, if you have bought jam or jelly or syrup, you can use that. Um, or if you've put it up yourself, like you can make, um, you can make syrup with just water and sugar. You can, um, uh, even put butter flavoring in it. 
and and make it butter flavored like Mrs. Butterworth's. Um, but um, and then jelly and jam is pretty easy to do. But um, that'll help break up the monotony, and then you can make peanut butter and jelly or jam sandwiches, which which is nice too. And then um, you can um, think about. You will not have enough of the the stuff that you like to eat if you're just starting to put back for the famine. You're, you're not going to have, say, all the canned food that you would ever want to eat and not need to fill in the gaps. When I say filling in the gaps, I'm talking about cooking a pot of beans in between, you know, two meals and then a pot of beans with rice and then maybe two meals. And if it's really um, to the point where you haven't stocked up a lot of the foods that you like to eat, you may eat one meal of the foods you like and then two days of beans and rice and then another day with a, a meal that you like. So um, the other another good thing to put away is um, tuna fish and salmon. Um, mackerel is cheaper than salmon. Usually, I don't know what's going on with that now, but but um, and so if you use mackerel you're going to want to rinse some of that salt off and it's going it's going to be very salty so you'll need to rinse it a little bit don't go crazy and waste your water but you know rinse it a little bit and uh and that's good um protein and it provides um the um uh, amino acids it, it provides the the omegas, you know, the fatty, healthy fatty oils, so to help keep you healthy. Sardines are another good thing. And then you can buy, like, just regular soda crackers. You could probably make crackers yourself. Um, I'm not planning on making crackers, but I have put some crackers back. So whatever you can put back, put it back. Now is the time to be getting things that you can put back. Now, if there's anyone in your family that has a baby who is on baby formula, listen up. There are places across our country that there's no baby formula available. People just can't buy it. It's not there. So if you have someone in your family who has a little one who is on formula, find out what formula they're on. And if you see it at the store, you pick it up. Because unless you have a wet nurse who can take over nursing your baby in the event that you can't find formula, and you are for some reason you can't breastfeed them yourself you're going to need what they call a, is a wet nurse is some woman who has been nursing a baby or um could nurse a baby um just because she starts putting the baby to her breast the baby will the the breast will start making milk so um keep that in mind as well um don't think that, oh, now I can't give my baby anything. The other thing you might want to consider putting back is some canned milk, and some powdered milk, and, um, and look for some baby vitamins. They usually come in drops, little droppers that you can put some, a couple of drops in a bottle. To keep them healthy that they're getting all the vitamins and nutrients that they need so um, and the other thing is 
I don't know if any of you watch pinball preparedness, but he was talking about one morning, he was talking about the corn shortage. And that corn is used in so many different things like makeup and deodorant and um, plastic for your shoes and all kinds of stuff. And um, what was another thing he was talking about that um, the corn, 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 uh, corn starch and something else that was a big deal to make, um, to make food, to have, to have food to eat. And, um, one of the things that you can do is you can go down to a feed, a feed store, say tractor supply or, uh, calibers or, you know, whatever's in your town and find a bag of corn feed and you can take that corn and you can grind it up and use it, you know, to, um, make cornbread and, um, or cornmeal mush. Um, we're really going to have to put our thinking caps on on how we are going to continuously feed our families and keep them healthy. So we're going to need to, if you have land, plant something. Tomatoes, lettuce, um, carrots, potatoes, plant something. Because every bite of food that you are growing in your yard is going to help to feed your family and don't waste anything. If somebody makes their plate and they are putting a ton of food on their plate because they are so hungry, tell them, take half of what you, would, you were planning on taking and if you want more, you can come back because whatever you put on your plate, you need to eat it all course now if you have a dog or you got pigs or chickens or whatever you could take the food that was on the plate and and go feed it to your your wild your livestock but um you want to try to make people conscious that they don't want to be wasting any food that if they take it and put it on their plate they need to eat it as my mom would say when we were growing up there are children in China who are starving. Eat your food, you know. So we were taught to, in, to clean our plates. We, not lick them, but you know <laughs> what I mean. Eat all the food that was on the plate. So, um, and then there's, um, if you like coffee or tea, you'll wanna get some tea bags. Now, as far as coffee goes, the ground coffee um, it's not going to keep near as long as coffee beans, which you will have to grind. But what keeps the best as far as coffee is freeze-dried coffee. So if you're trying to put back enough coffee for a year or two, try to pick up the freeze-dried coffee. And, excuse me, then you can also get the um, powdered creamer, or you can... Uh, make sure you have some canned milk or um, maybe some powdered milk or something that you can use for a creamer in your coffee. Or just learn to um, just put some sugar in your coffee or just learn to drink your coffee black. But you have to start thinking, conserve the food and make every meal count. Everything that you make count. You can't have your family come to the table and say, I don't like that. This is what you tell them. If you don't eat that, you don't get anything else. Because this is what's for dinner tonight. And then in morning rolls around, here's your dinner. You're not going to be able to nammy-pamby the, the picky eater. The picky eater 
is going to have to learn how to eat everything that everybody else is eating unless they have some kind of medical condition that requires special food for them so I want you guys to start thinking about that those ideas and I want you to put your ideas down in the comments so we can help one another oh and spices are very important to have spices to change the text the flavor of different things that you're you're making to turn it Mexican or to turn it into Chinese a Chinese dish you know whatever you're cooking so you can um, Tex-Mex um, so you can create different flavors to change up what you're eating um, simply by using spices and the other thing I did was I started buying, um, I started buying, um, um, oh, what is it called? It's called um, extract, extract for like flavoring uh, cakes. So if you're, you could even flavor pancakes, or um, if you could make a birthday cake, or something just to break the monotony uh, so I got a bunch of that and another thing you can get is you may not have like a ham bone or or anything to put in a pot of beans but if you get liquid smoke you can put it doesn't take much but you put some of that in your pot with your beans and it gives it a whole new flavor and if you've canned any meat you can mix that uh, liquid smoke with your meat and and give it another you know a flavor like it's just come off the grill so you know keeping people happy and um, so please if you have any ideas about things that you're putting back or things that you're storing how you're storing um, please put it in the comments and let's all work together to um, to do the best that we can as far as preparing because the famine is coming I read Joel the other night we've read Matthew we've read Mark we've read uh, Luke it all talks about famine we've read in Revelation chapter 6 the 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 black horse which represents inflation, which means the cost of food is going to get very high, and um, famine, which means there won't be enough food to, uh, for everyone to eat. 2,000 calories is like the going, you know, rate for what you should be planning to feed your family um, is um, 2,000 calories. 2,000 calories and you know if you're in a situation and you're you have a farm or you have land where you're growing um, vegetables and um, you're going to use a lot more energy than if you're just sitting on your sofa reading a book so you're gonna have to plan for that increase in calories and you're gonna also have to think about people coming to your door or to your home um, wanting to get some of your food. Now sometimes we're going to see people come to our house asking to do work. They'll want to work for um, some food. And, and that's okay. But you make sure, especially if you're a single woman, that you have a way of protecting yourself and your children from that person that you're trying to give a day's work so that you, you can feed them a meal because nobody's going to have money. <laughs> and you, But in, it's going to be important to stay safe. So I'm going to stop talking now. And please... Um, Make sure you're doing something about um, famine. It's coming and it's real. And it's not going to let up. It's not going to be like when COVID hit 
and the grocery stores ran out of toilet paper and the bread and the milk and all that was gone. And it was like that for a couple of days and then slowly a little bit more came and then slowly a little bit more came. We're going to get to the point, folks, where the grocery store is going to run out of food. It's going to have to close its doors. There's not going to be anything to sell. Um, already we see Walmart stores are closing up in an area they're closing where they've had like three or five stores in, in say in Dallas or something. They're closing up three or four stores. They're taking all the inventory from those stores and sending it to one store. And, and that's what they're doing because there's not enough food inventory. There's not enough food to stock all the shelves in all their stores. So they're eliminating a lot of the stores and just concentrating on keeping the shelves full on that one, in that one store. But it is going to come down to the day when you're going to go out there to go to the store to pick up something. And there's not going to be anything there to pick up. The store will be closed. There will be armed guard there protecting the building. And nothing in there to eat. So, um, think about that. And then there's going to be the ones that... You know, um, they say they're, oh, I'm going to be a lone wolf. I'll be just fine. Well, what the lone wolf wants to do is they want to just come to your house and steal what you have. So you're going to have to be cautious and watching for people that are just coming and looking to take your stuff. Um you're going to have to grow a different mindset, a different way of doing things. You're not going to send the kid out to throw the trash away because he might not come back. Yeah, somebody can take him and want to eat him, okay? And this is famine. And we've read it in the Bible. And, and where God says the father will eat the son and the son will eat the father. This, this is not a joke. These are real things that the Bible talks about as far as the famines, when the famines come as part of God's punishment. But the thing about the punishment that's coming, it's not for God's children. It's for the wicked. And when Jesus comes and his vesture is dripping in blood, it's because he put his sickle in to the earth and harvested all the wicked. And they're in the wine press. And the wine press is being um, turned. And the blood is coming out. And it's like nine, 969,600 feet flowing to the horse's to the horse's bridle it's that deep deep enough for Jesus to get his his outfit dripping in blood around the hem so um just think about what you're going to feed your family what would be things that you can get that are going to offer the most meals, the most calories. And you're going to have to have carbohydrates in every meal. You are not going to just sit down and eat a steak and a couple of beans or a salad. Those days are going away quickly, very quickly. So just keep in mind when you're thinking about what you're going to get, and, and please, people, share your ideas down in the comment section and um, write things down that you've done, things um, that you've put up, the way you've put them up to make them last. And 
um, how to take different things and make different meals. If you have recipes, share them. Share them with, with everyone so we can um, have more recipes to create dishes that are not just plain Jane, but have a pizzazz, you know, that our, our families are eating and they're not thinking or even feeling like, Ooh, we don't have any food. They're not going to think that. They're not going to feel that way, which is going to help with the anxiety tremendously. So share, 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 please. And as always, I love you.